Hey crafters, today I'm showing you how to beautifully personalize this tote bag using heat transfer vinyl. This is going to be a jam-packed video. I will show you how to upload your own cut files into Design Space, how to correctly cut HTV on your Cricut machine whilst minimizing waste. Not only will we be layering for this project, we will be using four different kinds of vinyl. We've got foil, glitter, everyday and sport flex. I'll introduce you to the Cricut heat guide, one of the best recommended settings with which to do the heat transfer. And I'll also show you how you can sometimes throw the heat guide out the window. Let's get started. Let's get our design into Design Space. We will go to the Upload option, click on Upload Image, and Browse. Find where you saved your file, click Open. Here you'll see a little preview of the file. You can change the name and add tags. When you're happy, you just click on Save. And the last step is to select the image and insert. I'm happy with the sizing of this image in relation to the bag that I'll be applying the vinyl to, so I'm going to go straight to the Make It screen. You can see we will be cutting on five different mats because of the five different colours we're using. There are two things we need to do before we move on from this screen. The first is we have to mirror each of the images. Because we're using iron-on vinyl, that vinyl goes onto the mat face down. And therefore you have to mirror your image so that when you peel it off the mat, and have it face up, your image is facing the correct way. So just go to each mat and click mirror. I'll show you in the next step, there is a reminder for this because it's something you could easily forget. Now, the next thing I want to do before I go to continue is I want to rearrange some of these mats where I've got more than one object. Because we all know how expensive our vinyls are, we don't want to be creating too much waste. Taking mat number five, for example, I'll be using a really nice pinky purple glitter. And I, you know, I don't want to have to use more of it than I need to and end up wasting. So I'm going to move these objects around closer together so that overall I'll be using less of my vinyl. So to do that, just click on the objects and you can see you can click and drag to move it around. So I just want to try and get them all a bit closer. I can rotate them to bring them closer as well. Also note, if I rotate too far, and I take the shape outside of the cutting area, then the box around it, let me show that again, will turn red. But if you let go, can you see design space will automatically move it back inside. So you have a safety net. So I'm happy with how I've arranged objects. You can see that I have a smaller area that I'll have to cut from my vinyl. The only additional thing that I'll have to do after the maker has done the cut is use a pair of scissors and just cut each individual object out so that we can then apply it to our project as individual pieces. So I'll just complete this for the other map. Okay, so I'm happy with all the mats. Let's start with number one. Go and continue. Make sure your maker is on, let it connect. So now we need to set the base material, click on browse, and then I'll just select the iron-on category. I'm using an everyday iron-on for this, this layer, so we select on everyday, select done. And here you can see there is a reminder for you that you have mirrored your image and you can check that here. It tells you which mat size you're going to use and then it also tells you if your mirror is on or not. So now we'll just load up the mat and put in the correct tool, which is the fine point blade. Right, let's put our vinyl onto the cutting mat. This is the first piece I'll be using. I've already trimmed it to size. When I apply this vinyl to the bag, this is the side that will be facing up. So when we cut it, we need this side to be facing down. So turn it over and position it on your mat in the top left. That's where I've got the image positioned on the mat within Design Space. As my mats are a little bit older, instead of buying new ones, I get more use out of my old ones by just using masking tape. And I also reuse this masking tape to reduce wastage. Now we're ready to load the mat into the machine as normal.
Once the cut has completed, before I hit the arrow to unload the mat, I will always do a quick check to confirm that the cut was successful, and only after that will I unload. If you find that the vinyl has not cut properly, just hit the C button again and it will redo the cut in the exact same position. We're now ready to weed all of our designs. This vinyl will be the square frame that forms the basis of the design. And because this has got a large amount of space in the middle which is not being utilised, I don't want to weed that away and have it wasted. So what I'll do is use a craft knife and use that to cut out the middle section as a craft scrap that I can reuse later. And now just grab a weeding tool and weed all of your designs. As we had grouped some of our images together in design space, we now need to take some scissors and just cut them out as well apply them to the bag individually. We can now start applying our vinyls to our canvas bag. First thing to do is iron out any creases from your bag from both sides. So I have laid down a towel on my work surface as using something like an ironing board would take away too much heat from the, from the bag. I'll be using my household iron on a cotton setting. You want it to be fairly hot. Although I'm not using a Cricut Easy Press, I will be using the Cricut Heat Guide to give me some instructions as to how long I should be pressing each of my different materials. As I'll be applying each of the different kind of vinyls that we're using for this design, I'll show you on the screen what the recommended settings are. What's important to remember is you should not be moving the iron around while doing this. It's meant to be a pressing motion. So you place the iron on top of your vinyl and you hold it in place for the recommended amount of time. And as the iron will not cover the entire design, you'll just have to keep moving it around doing individual presses to cover the whole area. For every vinyl, once you've pressed on top, you will turn your fabric over and press from the opposite side. Here I'm using the Cricut Sport Flex Vinyl, which per the Cricut Heat Guide is not compatible with 100% cotton that this bag is made of. However, I did make it work. I had to do multiple presses using the same settings as the everyday vinyl. In all honesty though, it was hard work and I wouldn't recommend using this vinyl on cotton. these flowers I want to make sure the alignment is going to be correct. 
So I'll lay down the three different pieces onto the bag. So when I'm happy with the alignment, I'll remove the top layer and press the lower ones first. I want to point out that when I was layering on this section here, the foil vinyl that was already on the bag actually melted because there was too much heat being applied. I hadn't protected it with the greaseproof paper. So my advice would be to always put any foil vinyl as your topmost layer so that this doesn't happen to you. So guys, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I've learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot doing this project. Follow me at London Crafter over on Instagram to see more of my projects. And until the next video, happy crafting!